In this video, we'll talk about floating point precision and how the way computers store numbers places a limitation on the accuracy achievable in certain calculations. After studying this video, you should be able to explain how computers store numbers with finite precision and describe the key elements of IEEE double precision standard relevant to numerical computation. This standard is the MATLAB default. Lastly, you should be able to describe some example situations where finite precision can lead to numerical errors. Let's start by reviewing some of the sources of error in scientific computing. We've talked about this before, but these sources are the assumptions that we make in developing the underlying theory of a mathematical model, the uncertainty in the experimental data that might underlie that model, for example, like some model constants, approximations made in developing the numerical algorithms, and what we'll focus on in this video, errors that can be caused by the limitations of using a computer to limit the algorithm, to implement the algorithm. Let's first review the idea of accuracy versus precision. So this figure indicates the two goals of increasing accuracy with increased precision. Down here in D we have lots of really precise numbers right on target so to speak and this would be high accuracy and high precision. If the values are scattered around we have less precision um, but they can still be relatively accurate if the average value is accurate. We average all of those results. Or over here we can have less accuracy so we can have values scattered around a non-accurate result. We can even have very precise values that are scattered around a non-accurate result. And down here these are the two cases that we can have with computers. We know that computers are very precise storing numbers with lots of digits. But we have to be careful not to confuse that precision with accuracy because there is the case where we can have this precise but inaccurate result that's still possible. And in this video we'll look at why that can happen. So let's start by considering a few example MATLAB results. So if you enter in MATLAB the sine of pi you'll get the following answer. However, we know that the sine of pi is equal to zero. And there's two things happening here that give us a result that's roughly times 10 to the minus 16. One is the number pi is an irrational number. Remember that means it has an infinite number of decimal places and there's no way for MATLAB to store all of those decimal places. Secondly, the algorithm for computing sine is not perfectly accurate. There's some approximations in that as well. And both of these lead to a still very precise number. It's very close to zero, but it's actually 10 to the minus 16. Here's another example summation. 2 plus 5 times 10 to the minus 20 minus 2. And we see that MATLAB gives us an answer of 0, whereas it should be, we have 2 minus 2 is 0, it should just be 5 times 10 to the minus 20. And we see here that if we just reorder the terms, MATLAB does output the correct result. And this is an example where, by being careful and applying some knowledge of how computers store numbers, we can avoid some of the pitfalls of finite precision. And we'll talk about why this happens here in a minute. But let's talk about how do computers store numbers. Computers use floating point representation. And this is similar to what you've probably learned as scientific notation. So if you can review the idea of decimal scientific notation, we have uh, decimal digits times 10 to some 
exponent. So this is the exponent. And we refer to this part as the mantissa. Now computers think in binary, ones and zeros only. In fact, the first computers were basically just switches that turned on or off to represent ones or zeros. So if it can only be a one or zero, then there's no flexibility in the first digit. This is always going to be a one. And then the mantissa, each one will be a one or a zero, and then we will it'll be time two, since it's binary, we have two possibilities, zero and one, just like here we have zero through nine, ten possibilities to go over here. And uh, let's look at an example. So here's 6.432 times 10 to the third. So we can read this in decimal as 6 times 10 to the third plus 4 times 10 squared plus 3 times 10 to the 1 plus 2 times 10 to the 0. And we can actually look at the same idea in binary going through and converting this to binary which we're not going to go through the details of how to do that by hand that number can be expressed as equal to 2 to the 12th plus 2 to the 11th plus 2 to the 8th plus 2 to the 5th which we can then write in floating point representation for binary as 1.1, so there's the 12th place, the 11th place, 10th is a 0, 9th is a 0, 8th place, 7th is a 0, 6th is a 0, 5th place, times 2, and then we started at the 12th place. Incidentally, you can uh, do this with MATLAB. It does have a built-in function called des to bin, and that will convert a decimal number to a binary number. So let's look at how then this information, once we've converted the number to binary, is stored in the computer. The MATLAB default for storing numbers is double precision. In fact, even when the display is four decimal places, which is the default, it's still stored, the numbers are still stored in double precision. So let's look at what that means. This is the IEEE 754 standard, that's the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Floating point, it's 64-bit binary floating point representation. 64-bit means each bit is equal to 1 or 0 and the standard is dictating how the bits are allocated and this ind this table indicates that so first of all we allocate one bit to the sign of the number so is it positive or negative then 11 bits to the exponent and that's done with a bias that increases the range slightly and I'll talk about more of that in a minute and 52 bits to the mantissa so each one of those bits is a 1 or a 0 and that's how that computer 64 bits of computer memory are allocated to each double precision number so this would be a single variable for a scalar or every element in a matrix or vector so let me talk a little bit more about the bias. The basic idea of the bias is instead of allocating a sign, we have no bit for the sign of the exponent. We just say that the exponent is equal to the value, which is ranges from 0 to 2047 minus the bias which is 1023 
So then we have an exponent ranging from 2 to the negative 1023 to 2 to the positive 1024. So let's look at what that does for the ranges. Now, 2 to the 1024, 1024 is reserved as the overflow value, which in MATLAB you'll see an inf for infinity. And so the largest real number we can store in MATLAB is actually one bit smaller than 2 times to the 1024. So that would be 1 1.111 times 2 to the 1023, where this is 52 ones. And that's actually stored in MATLAB special variable called real max. And it's equal to 1.798 times 10 to the 308. So a pretty large number. The smallest real number then is going to be just 1 times 2 to the negative 1023. Now you might wonder, well, why can't we do 0 0.00001, so 1 just in that last bit in the mantissa, times 2 to the negative 1023? And the reason is because this would not have precision. That number only has one decimal place of precision because we can't store any more because we can't go to a smaller exponent. This number then, 2 to the negative 1023, is stored in MATLAB's real min number and that's 2.225 times 10 to the minus 308. So we've talked about the range, the largest and the smallest numbers we can store. Now let's talk about the precision. So the use of 52 bits for the mantissa is going to put a limit on the precision with which a number can be stored. The machine epsilon is what we call that limit. So it will be the maximum relative error between a number and MATLAB's representation of that number. And it will be that last digit in the mantissa, or 2 to the minus 52 and that's equal to 2.2204 times 10 to the minus 16. And so in general we have 16 digits of precision. And again, the default display in MATLAB is four digits. If you type format long you'll get all 16. It's always stored in 16 digits even if the display is only 4. And that special value is stored in the MATLAB variable epsilon, EPS. So let's look at some cases when we should be concerned about round off error as a result of finite precision. So it can happen in circumstances other than just storing numbers. So we've already seen that any number we store is going to have an epsilon about 2 times 10 to the minus 16. So every number we store in MATLAB is plus or minus 2 times 10 to the minus 16. Now if we have a large computation, for example a process is performing a large number of calculations, those round off errors may accumulate to become significant. But an important thing here is this is only a concern when those numbers are accumulating. So repeated additions or subtractions would lead to that accumulation. Multiplications and divisions, not necessarily so. And also when we replace the number, not necessarily so. If we're just doing like an iterative method like we did with the roots problems, we would not, even if it takes us a thousand iterations, it doesn't mean it's going to generate more round off error. Another example is adding a large number and a small number. Since the small number's mantissa is shifted to the right to be the same scale as the large number, we're going to lose some digits. Because what happens is when we add those two numbers together, we need to normalize the numbers so that they have the same exponent. And 
here's an example looking at base 10 numbers and just using uh, seven decimal places. But if we start with these two numbers, if we want to add them together, the first thing we need to do is shift over the mantissa in the second number, the 5.12 number, shift that over to the right so that we can get the same exponents on both numbers. But when we do that, we are going to lose all of these digits. So we've lost that precision when we do this addition. So this is another example when we're adding a large number to a small number of where the finite precision can introduce some small round off error. And again, on this may not be a problem unless we have large computations where we're repeatedly doing this over and over again and this can accumulate. Another example is smearing and this is the example I gave at uh, the beginning of the video where if we have an individual term in a summation that's larger than the summation itself we know again that this number should come out to 5 times 10 to the minus 20 but MATLAB tells us this is zero and again the reason so is when we shift this smaller number it's the same as adding a large number and a small number when we shift this we lose the 5 times 10 to the minus 20 when that's shifted over to be on the same scale as the 2 and we'll see some implications of finite precision going forward when it's relevant to various numerical methods approaches in the course.